hi, Tom. Thank you so much for taking time tonight to talk about this. Oh, I'm happy to. Nice to meet you, Ashley. Nice to meet you, too. I actually interviewed your brother oh, back no. when um, Red Shoes came out. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Spoken like a true sibling. <laughs> I know. We're twin brothers. We gotta we poke at each other a lot. Yes. My kids aren't twins and they still do that. So Oh yeah. It's totally a sibling, a sibling thing. thing. <laughs> um Especially. you animated my childhood and the movies you worked on are the reason why I wanted to do something within this industry. Um, so this is an honor for me. The Lion King is my favorite movie of all time. So Oh, that's cool. Thank you <laughs> for that. Well, my small part, you're welcome. <laughs> I mean, Simba's a big part. He's a big part. Well, I know. I know. It's just, there's so, it's hundreds of people. So, I, you know, you got to feel like you're still contributing a, a piece of it, you know? Yes. But uh, no, I it, I hear that a lot. I go to conventions and things like that. And I hear like, oh my gosh, you made my childhood. And I must admit, it's always fun to hear, you know? So, and I get it too. It's, I wasn't a child, but I, I still, I'm still kind of a immature in my head. So I felt like I was like everybody else watching the movies, just a fan. What was it about pencils and pic pencils versus pixels that made you want to be a part of this? So I'm, I'm the producer of it. And what that meant in this case was that I was the second person in, uh, the director of it had, uh, came to me. He was a good friend of mine. And he'd never directed a film before. And he said, I have this amazing idea for a documentary. It's about your generation, the 90s and 2000s, and kind of like what happened to 2D animation and, you know, that whole story. But tell it on an uplifting kind of from the artist standpoint. Uh, and there's down points to the story. There's no doubt about it. But but in general, it's more about the passion and the love of of these people that committed their lives to making that second golden age of animation in the 90s and 2000s. And when he came to me with that idea, I was just like, why didn't I think of this? I, I, I said, please, let me help you on this. I want to work with you on it. And so I became the producer. And I really, all the people in it are friends of mine. And so I started reaching out and kind of contacting all of them and kind of bringing the band back together to get all these amazing interviews from the people that were there and that lived it. It was great. What was it like reconnecting with Ming Na Wen? Oh, I loved it. So I'm a huge Ming Na fan. Um, we've been friends uh, for years now because she did the voice of Mulan. And while well, I animated Mushu uh, in the film, not Mulan, um, I got to know her a little bit then. And of course, my twin brother, Tony, he directed that film, Mulan. He was the co-director. And so he got to know her really well at the time. But since then, we both we've had her on our podcast and just through the years, we've kept up with each other. And she's always been that celebrity. I mean, and she's been she's probably bigger than ever right now in a lot of ways with doing Book of Boba Fett, The Mandalorian, being a Marvel character, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and being a voice of a Disney princess. I mean, I mean, unofficial Disney princess. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> And, uh, but, but I mean, like, that's a trifecta that not, I don't think anybody can say. Um, and then she got her, she got a star on the Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame recently too. And so all through that time, I was contacting her and getting her to record on this film because it's been seven years in production. And so the fact that every single time I would call or text or she would just answer right away and be like, yes, it was always a yes no matter how busy she was. Uh, so she, she's she got a heart of gold. I just, I love her. I love that. I think each person talked about in the documentary was the film or character that inspired them to get into animation. Can you share yours? And were you and Tony always going to be animators together? Or did one of you peer pressure the other into doing <laughs> this job? You know, I'll, I guess uh, your first part of the question was like, what what's my favorite character kind of? Um, yeah, what you know, character or film got you into animation? You know, I like hate what to say made it. you want to be an animator. So <laughs> I don't know if I've ever told anybody in an interview this this answer because it's kind of a uh, like a guilty pleasure. I t I wasn't. I probably turned and started going toward animation because of the movie The Black Cauldron, and if you've seen that movie, that was a Disney film. 
uh, it's not one of their best. They never talk about it. Um, and, but it came out right as I was graduating high school. That's how old I am. And so it was more like the timing of it that, that affected me. It was the very first time where I went to the movie and I saw, I stayed for the credits and I went, oh wait, these are all, there's a ton of people that worked on this. And it was around that time, just after high school, that the light went on in my head that, oh wait, I'm an artist. I, I love cartooning. I love all, I love animation. I love all these things. I haven't tried it yet, but those people probably hadn't tried it at my age and they got in and, you know, so it was the one that kind of put the pieces together. And obviously I liked it enough that made me want to be an animator. Um, so that was sort of the, what lit the flame. Uh, and then for the second part of that is Tony and I both, well, we're identical twins. And so it's hard to, we do kind of everything together, but especially back then, like we didn't have girlfriends. We were a little bit nerdy um, and we were into comic books before it was cool, all of that stuff. But then on top of that, we drew cartoons all the time, like in the high school newspaper, we did the comic strips and things like that. So we weren't exactly like uh, girl magnets. <laughs> and so that gave us a lot of time together. And we basically ate all the same things, slept on bunk beds, and and then also had separate animation desks, not but like drafting desks in our room. And so we drew together all the time, literally back to back, uh, making comic strips and comic books and things like that. And so when animation kind of fell into our laps just out of high school, when a friend of ours had done some clay animation and he showed it to us and he'd done it with uh, just a Super 8 camera, all of a sudden the lights went on and it was around the time I'd seen Black Cauldron. All of those things combined to go, wait a second, maybe we could do this. And I don't remember one of us having the idea first. I just think it both dawned on us. We both tried, we did a little short film and stop motion and we were just hooked from that point on. And then we thought, well, why are we doing stop motion? We already draw. Let's learn hand-drawn animation. And so we found out about Cal Arts. And we were both immediately vested 100%. It's funny you say Black Cauldron. I read those books. The movie okay. was not the best. But I love the book series. Oh, oh, the original. Oh, okay. Well, that, and I've heard they're very good. Yeah. So yes. I don't know I if you could compare. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we won't say any more anything more about Black Cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> You've animated so many characters. Who has been the most challenging one to animate, and which one is your favorite? If you can pick one. Uh, yeah, both of those are pretty easy answers. So, uh, most challenging, no doubt about it, was Pocahontas. Um, just a hard character to draw, very realistic in her movements and her acting had to be very subtle and precise. Um, her drawings had to be very precise. And then anytime she moved her head at all, it felt like you're reinventing the character completely. Um, mm -hmm. And I was working under Glenn Keane, who's in, who's in the documentary, Pencils versus Pixels. And so and everybody looks up to Glenn. So I was, not only that was I doing this really hard character, but I actually had to audition for it. Um, it was the first time in my Disney, much less anybody's like ever at Disney that they had. Glenn said, if you want to be on the Pocahontas unit, he, he was a supervising animator and he was he needed other animators to help him obviously do the film because she's in every shot in the movie. Um, he couldn't do it by himself. But he's he so he said, if you want to be an animator on this, and I had just finished Lion King working on Simba. And so that wasn't good enough. He didn't care what you'd done before. He said, it's an audition. I need to see figure drawings of women, right? So female figure drawings. And you have to do, and they brought in models. Some of them look like Pocahontas a little bit, but most of them are just athletic women for the in general. And we just did months of figure drawings of you know female anatomy and he you had to submit those after those couple months to get on his unit to work on Pocahontas and literally that has never happened since uh before or since that and uh sure enough he got the the cream of the crop like some, the best because you couldn't just be a good animator you had to be a good drafts person you had to draw really well to be on the Pocahontas unit 
then on top of that, she had a co-star that was attached to her, which was her hair. And so like her, her hair in every shot, we had to make that up. And the wind's always blowing the colors of the wind. And so that was a whole nother level of challenge too. So not only her face, but her hair. So anyway, long story short, she's the hardest uh, and most challenging, but then Mushu would be my favorite. Uh, I was this, I got to be Glenn's, Glenn's position on Mulan. I was a supervising animator of Mushu. And so that was a dream come true to be a supervising animator. But then on top of that, they basically gave me a character that was an animator's dream. Uh, you know, like you can go through all the films and go, he was just like the genie was in Aladdin. That's an animator's dream. That's like, just like, you know, um, you know, every film has those, those characters that are just fun to animate, but also are an important part of the film. And anyway, Mushu was that uh, in Mulan and I was thrilled to work on him. Well, I love both of those answers and I could talk about this all night, but I think it's time. My time is up. <laughs> so oh, okay. I appreciate it so much. And I really loved Pencils vs. Pixels and I hope all animation fans watch it because it really was beautiful. And I even learned something and I consider myself an animation nerd. So I, I love okay. hearing that. I, I feel that same way. I've shown it with with students of animation and they're learning things in the film. And, uh, and I love that. So there's a educational, but a fun educational side to it too. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashley.